Hey, everybody, how's it going? It's Mr. T. Oh. Okay, maybe I shouldn't be messing around. Today's lesson is going to be about composition assignment. Fourth graders, it's due next week. Or not the whole thing, just up to here, level one. I'm going to start by reminding us about how all this stuff works on the sheet and how the practice is going to help you be a composer because you can read and write and play music. So step one, it says practice writing your clef and time signature. If you're a violin player, your clef is the treble clef. And the time signature is the 4-4. Four, four. That's treble. That's the clef for viola. We call it the alto clef. The time signature is exactly the same. Here's one for cello bass. Ours is called the bass clef. It almost looks like a question mark with two dots. And then our time signature is just the same as before. I want you to write and practice your clef at least four times. And the time signature. It'll look something like that if you're a cello player. Next step is to practice writing your quarter notes. Now quarter notes have a stem and a note head. If the note head is below the middle line, the stem goes up, no matter where the note head is written. If the note is on the middle line or above, the stem goes down. Next step is to practice your quarter rests. Quarter rests are pretty easy to write. Start with the letter Z. And then draw a C, and then you'll have a nice looking quarter rest there. Some people like to do it from the bottom up, that works too. Beethoven kind of did something like that. So if it's good for Beethoven and Mozart, you can try that too. Just a little sizzle there. Good luck. Now, this next part is really helpful if you have your cheat sheet on the back of the blues for practicing writing your D string notes. There's five D string notes if you include the A. For cello players, we're going to include the A. There's D, there's E, there's F sharp, there's G, there's A. That's how I'd do it if I was cello or bass. For a cello player or a bass player, their D string is right here. E is in the space here. F sharp, G, A. If I'm a viola player, my D starts in that space. Line, space, line, space. Those are my D string notes. And then I fill it in and give it a stem. Now technically I broke the rules by putting five notes in a measure, but these are the five notes you're going to be able to use for your composition. Think of it like a palette of colors when an artist paints a painting. This is our palette of musical colors that we paint on silent. This one's for violin players. Our D, of course, is down here. E, F sharp. Remember that symbol, otherwise it's a different note. G, and then A. Now, I'm glad I made some mistakes here. You see this? It's hard to determine if that's a G line note or an A space note. So I'm going to start over and make it more clear. D, E, F sharp, G, A. That's better. Sharp goes there. Stems for each note. Now I've got some clear D string notes. This has been practice for the next step. Level one composition and finish this. Some of us have already finished, so you're done. If you'd like to, you can go on to the next step and try it without my guide notes. Or even going to the back where it gets longer to write a composition. Choice is yours though. All I want is level one this week. Now I've got some rules. I say four measures. One, two, three, Four. That's as long as your assignment is. Four measures. I said ending guides. These notes here are the ending guides. You can't change those notes. The last note of measure two is A. 
The last note of measure four is D. Right now this is violin music for my viola, cello, bass friends. Then I said D string notes only. Remember when you practice D string notes up above? This is why. So if you write a note that's not on the D string, that would be breaking my rules. The last step I say is that you use quarter notes. A quarter note is any note that looks like this with a filled in note head and a stem. And you can use a maximum number of five quarter rests. One time I had a kid write a piece of music that was just rests. He called it the sounds of silence. Let's try. Our first step is to choose our first note. It doesn't really matter what the first note is because you can always change it. Let's say I start on D. And my next note, I'm going to play A. Just because I want to have a big jump. Now I want that jump to come back to G. And let's see. Dum, dum, dum. Yeah. There we go. D, A, G, A. D, A, rest. There's one rest. I can use four more. The rest of my composition is up to me. G, F sharp, G, F sharp. Remember my sharp symbol. Dum, dum, dum. Let's try that. Now, I've written my composition. The next step is to check. Does it sound good? Rest. I'm happy with that. If you like, you can always change a note. Maybe I should add a rest somewhere. Let's add a rest. And try the whole composition again. Rest. Rest. Ah, that sounds a little more final. Now there's no right or wrong answers when you're writing a composition. You're the composer. You get to choose which notes. I'm giving you some restrictions, only D string notes for example, but within those restrictions you can create incredible music. Good luck composers. One last piece of advice. I would definitely play through your compositions every time you write a new note. That's really important. But secondly, and I think even more important, is share your compositions with others. See what another person tries out of your composition. Sometimes another person looking at your music can find something you didn't even know was there. It's kind of like when someone writes a story and then another person reads that story and it all of a sudden brings up feelings that the original author had no idea about because every time someone receives music or art or words, it can land differently because that person is different than the person who wrote it. So spread around the magic of your musical skill. Share it with others and listen to how they interpret the art that you can create. Little note for my fifth grade students, I use the fourth grade composing assignment as a example. I didn't use the fifth grade one today, but it's all the same principles. Even though you're using D and A string notes, it's the same thing. Test out the notes and see if you'll like them. Play them for yourselves. Play them for others. Have others read your compositions. For my fifth graders, a reminder, level one is on the second sheet on the back side. So there's a lot of practice that I want fifth graders to do before they get to the assignment level one fifth graders. And if you're a fourth grader, level one is the same thing I want for you. You can always do other things for extra credit. Go to level two, level two B, and level two C. Okay, good luck y'all, your composers, musicians, and artists.